it's T with T Quilts, and I'm here today to show you how to modify a quilt. I have a customer that wants a quilt a little bit bigger, and I'm going to show you my process. So I wanted to show you my customer's quilt. This quilt has been completed. It has been used. I'm not sure exactly when it was completed. I have to look at the other end of the label and maybe I'll put it on the screen if it has a label on it. But it has been used. Um, the owners of this quilt, who it was given to, asked the customer if they could make it a little bigger so it could fit on their bed. The owner uh, wants to make this her permanent bed quilt. She's been using it, her and her husband have been using this quilt and they just need it to be a little bit longer so that their feet don't stick out when they're sleeping. Sometimes their feet come from under the cover. So, my customer has done some prep work for me on this particular quilt. Also note that this quilt was custom quilted by another quilter and I don't have any of the designs in here and I've talked to my customer about what a design choice is and she basically leaves things up to me but I did run some things by her that she thinks will be okay. So some things that my customer has done is that they have taken the binding off this quilt on the edge that they want the piece attached to. And so I'll just show you this end here where I told her just a couple of inches back from the sides and then you can see where this custom border has been quilted in but they did leave space where I would probably be able to go in here and sew my pieces onto here so I'm going to have to first take off all of the basting stitches here and then sew one quarter inch pieces onto the top the back as well as the batting that's here in the middle and I'm not sure how I'm I think I will have to go ahead and sew that batting down because normally I could overlap but since I only have like a half inch I want to make sure I don't skip some batting areas so I probably will have to either hand sew or do something on my sewing machine with the batting as well so what I received from my customer after she took all of that off she provided me with a piece of material <clears throat> it's actually folded in half but what I like to do is make sure that I've got a piece that's going to be wide enough to fit on the frame as well as to cover the back so I like to have at least four extra inches on each side so I'm going to have to move you guys. So I'm actually going to just make sure that I got enough material because you don't want to start something and then end up not having enough material. So I've got plenty of material with my eight inches available to me on the side. And then I also have my backing piece. because I just want to make sure I have enough of that as well. And I do, they're the same size, so I'm okay there. The other thing I need to be aware of is that I'm going to add as much material as I can to the bottom here. And so I want to make sure that my widths are also working with each other. So this is my backing piece, this fabric here. And when I put this up here, I can see that my top fabric is shorter it should be four to eight inches <laughs> shorter than what I have so what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily just go ahead and leave everything to the size that she has 
Uh, this was ripped so I don't have to worry about cutting the edges that were ripped. And I may have to square this piece up because it looked like it was cut. But this one here has been ripped. So I'll go ahead and sew this onto the backing seam. Leaving at least four inches on each side. This one I am actually going to square up and then make sure I have a straight edge. As you can see here, this is not straight. So you always want to make sure that you have a straight edge. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then she also gave me the batting that she put into this quilt, the type of batting that's in this quilt, so that the batting actually matches throughout as well. So that's going to be the more tedious part of this process. So I will be doing that as well. How do I charge for something like this? I'm just going to charge by my hourly rate and because I have never done this process before and then I'll see what that comes out to be with how much time I actually put into it to see if it was worth my while to charge that way or should I charge a different way. But for right now, that's what we're doing and I will come back when I get all three of these pieces put together. I want to charge while I'm recording because it takes a little longer when I'm recording to make videos and it's not fair for me to charge my customer that. So I'm going to go ahead and start scoring up these pieces that I need and then working my way to my sewing machine while I will sew these three pieces together so that they're connected. At this point I have sewed the backing to the backing piece and I also have sewn the front piece to the front piece. It was very difficult to do that because I only had a half inch seam allowance allowable to me and in some areas it was a little bit smaller than a half inch. So I opted not to do the batting on the sewing machine. So I'm going to roll this quilt top up and I've just pinned this top up onto my take up bar. The whole entire quilt, the top of it is on my take up bar. And then on my backing bar I have used my leader grips to add the back fabric. So let me go ahead and roll this up. to stop right there it's not at my quilting level yet I'm checking the seams now because I see I missed a spot and I'm showing you all this because this is the process that you will have to go through so I'm not even sure if I even got the camera even tilted this way but I'm going to have to take all of this off and go fix this seam here that I somehow missed when I was sewing so I will go do this start over <laughs> and come back not necessarily start over but go make this correction here and then I'll be right back so I will have to reload it onto my frame again but again these are the things that happen when you are doing these types of modifications so I'll be back with you shortly all right I am back at the machine and I am now going to repin this quilt back onto the frame. I'm going to see if pinning from the top will be better than pinning from the bottom. Since this is my first time doing this, may as well experiment. So, I'm going to place the binding edge at the edge of my rod and then I'm going to pin actually on the leader. Even though I have leader grips in here, I'm not using that because uh, it'll be too thick. It'll stretch out my leaders and then when I go to put just the backing fabric on here, it will not work anymore. So I don't want to replace my leaders, my leader grips anyway. And I'm sure because this has been pre-quilted that it's not going to go on straight. So I'm just going to have to do the best that I can. So 
so I ran out of red I was using to hand sew my batting and I'm almost finished with that so I thought I'd come back and show you what I'm doing put a knot in this end Now, because this seam is so tiny, what I'm actually doing is I'm sewing the batting onto the seam line that I put into the backing fabric to make sure that it doesn't slip because when I go to quilt this, I'm not going to be stitching. Uh, I'm going to start my stitching a half inch away so I don't want this batting to move and then you have a space in the quilt that has no batting, a noticeable space. So I want to keep it kind of how the lady had quilted it before and had like a half inch left. So that's what I'm trying to do here is leave a half inch. And I'm doing a stitch about every three quarters to one inch away. Single strand of thread here. Just knotting the end here. And we're all done. So now I can actually pull this top fabric back down and We're going to go ahead and roll this quilt so we can get it further into the quilting position. Right there is good. Okay. Okay. And I am going to use my clamps on this as well. Just want to smooth this out as much as I can. Okay. Okay, so now I have everything on. And I need to call my client to confirm what it is that she wants me to, how much she wants me to add because my top is larger than my backing. I just want to make sure, double check that before I start stitching. And uh, we'll come back with more. So I'm back and I am actually in the process of quilting out my panto that I chose. I just wanted you to See what I chose? I actually started stitching the Baptist fan and it did not look great with the stitching that was already on the quilt from the previous quilter. So I took that part out and I started over and I chose a different panto. I'll have to find the name of this panto and put it on the screen for you guys. But I am now stitching it out and I put it in an offset pattern. So maybe what I'll do 
after I finish this quilt is I will show you how I offset it and I'll show you especially because I needed to also reduce the size of the panto because when I put the second row in to offset it was bigger than my pattern box so I think I will do just a quick video to show you how to do that on the screen but it will not have any stitching so our quilt is now finished and I am at the point where now it's time for me to take this off of my long arm so I'm going to go release this rod and take this off I've already taken the bottom part off So now that I have my quilt off the frame, you can see the section that I actually added to this quilt top. And she didn't really care what was added to the quilt top because it's going to be hidden by the footboard anyway. So it didn't really matter. But I did try to use the clamshell pattern and it just did not work and did not look pretty with the stitching that was already done up here. And so I had a pattern that was kind of comparable to this and so that's what I went with the clamshell lily. Um, I'm going to measure what I've added and I'm going to multiply it times two and then I'm going to add about 15 inches just for safety sake and I am going to when I trim this bottom off I am going to use it to make binding that I can attach onto this piece here so she took all of this apart and so this binding fit the original quilt so we do need to add more binding to this as well so i will be squaring this up and getting the new binding put to the front and i think she's going to sew it to the actual back so on the quilt i have now squared up the bottom edges and the sides on both sides this right here is where I had a thread break and I'm going to actually thread a needle and pull that into the middle of the quilt. But I have a piece here that I've cut for, uh, left over from trimming and I'm going to use it to make a two and a half inch strip so that I can add it to the binding that I have already. Um, I need a little bit more binding to finish off this quilt as well. So that's our next step. Cut a strip here. So I have my two and a half inch strip for binding. I have the extra binding here that um, my customer removed from the quilt top. And so what I'm going to do now is add this binding, this binding strip here that I just cut onto this strip. And then I need to press it all open and I will be adding it to the uh, quilt top. I am here at the sewing machine actually putting on the binding and thought that I would just show you a little bit of that. I just um, stitch from where I had to take a little bit of this binding apart so that I could start my stitching. And I am now down here at the corner where I'm about to change and that's when I decided maybe you might wanna see some of me adding the binding onto the quilt as well <laughs> so i'm gonna go ahead and do a speed up on this video and hopefully you will enjoy it
going to stop stitching a distance away so that I can make my connection point here but in order to do that I'm going to have to take some more of this apart because I just don't have enough for me to press that out and then flip it back to the other side so I'm gonna do that real quick to stitch this same allowance here go back down a little bit in my stitch length <clears throat> Okay, so we've got our piece added on. I like to always check and make sure everything's turned the right way first before I cut. So everything is turned the right way. And now I can go ahead and cut this extra piece of binding off. So I can see that I'm about to run out of battery juice. So... I'll just tell you what my next steps are going to be. It's going to be folding. Um, I want to fold this in half and then I'm going to continue to sew this onto this seam where I finished and then it will be ready for flip over binding hand sewn onto the back. So maybe I'll come back with a completed photo of the quilt. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.